So we want to download this Apache server for our Windows system. So we go to this binary deposit and we download the file. And we wait for it to download. And once it's downloaded, we'll start installing the system. There we go. We'll click Run. Next, next, and there we have a few choices. Uh, we have minimum, full, and normal. Normal have what is needed, and the full have some extra examples. So I take uh, the normal plus this host manager. We have some different things. We have uh, some shutdown port and so on. Just leave all at default, but uh, type a username and a password that you will use for this Apache server. So uh, next, next, next. And here we are to choose uh, where our Java path should be. It should have found that, else just uh, locate it for the installer. Now it's done. I'm going to click Read Me and start the server. Now the Windows is starting the service called Tomcat 7. So uh, the server should appear now. We have the settings here, which you can play with if you want, but all should work by default. So we want to download a program called Tomcat. It's made by Apache. So go to this website and download the tarball, which contains all the files we need. It's binary. So it gives us this file, which we extract to our folder. And this is the folder we get. Inside this, there's a bin folder. And it contains this file called startup.sh. So we open our terminal and go to this folder. What we need to do is we want to give each .sh file read and write permission. So this is what we do with this chmod command. Just type this, and now you can start the program. So now our server is running. We can test this by going to our web browser and type localhost colon h8080. So let's begin making our first web application. So first of all we need to start our server. So we go to the folder where we have Apache server and we start the server by the startup batch. So now just checking we go to our web browser type in localhost colon 8080 and see this screen to make sure it's online. Alright now we are in this folder. This is contained in our Apache folder. It's called Web Apps. So this is where we are to store our uh, website. I call this folder my site, and it's to contain all of all the files I want. So first of all, I could make a HTML page, just called index.html. Now, if I type slash my site slash index.html, I see nothing because it's an empty HTML file. Alright, now Tomcat has a very strict way of organizing the folders. So first of all we need a folder called webinf. Web. And inside there we need to have a folder called classes, where we are to contain all of our servlets. So I'll just create a symbol. You have a class, call it hello world dot Java. And I'll start building this. So we need to import some folders. First of all, we need the IO from the standard Java. And we also need this Java X dot servlet. Let's just take star in there and uh, servlet dot http and check all that. Alright, and then we declare our class hello world and we extend this HTTP servlet which has a predefined function do get which takes all the get requests we get from the web browser. So we have this request and we have to give the server some response. 
which we define here. All right, this function throws something. It's first of all it throws an I/O exception, and it also throws this servlet exception, which we get from this JavaX folder. So we start by defining a response dot set response type so we need to tell the website what we are giving to it so it's a text slash HTML like you know from the HTTP uh, specification so just let me define my tabs here yes So what I did now was I defined a print writer and called it out and we get this writer from our response from the HTTP servlet response. What we can do now is we can call out the print line. I'll just make a bunch. I don't know how many I need yet. So what it does it prints to the web browser what we're going to give it. So we type all this HTML like we know but it is defined in our Java so we can implement Java code meanwhile while we're writing HTML pages so let's see a title hello world and my header yes and I'll make a short body See just a header one, hello world, and end the header one. Slash body and slash HTML. All right, so I don't need the last one. I'll just leave that. So let's see. Um, I need to fix some indentation here. There we go. So this is all our Java class really needs. So this is a very simple. We save it and now we have to compile it. So we find the Java folder or the Java file. We kept that in web apps, my site. And inside this web inf and classes. So if we check, we have the hello world.java here. Now we need to compile it. So we type Java C, hello world.java. Get all these error messages. Let's see. Print writer, that's a mistake. I'll just fix that. It's not print writer, it's print writer. Alright. So, but all these servlet exception, HTTP server response, all this is not known because we need to link to a class path. Or just CP, like this. So, um, Tomcat has all this in a specific folder. Let's see how far we got now. No, we need to go one step further out. Alright, in this lib folder, we have a lot of jar files. We need to take this servlet API where our functions are declared. So, we link to this jar file and compile our Hello World jar. So let's see, it compiled and we have our class file here right now. I'll just remove that tilt that annoys me. Alright, so now we need to tell the server how to use these class files. So what we do is we define this web.xml file and I'll just show you how to write that. The first is we need a header of some sort. It's called web dash app and we have to define all sorts of things I'll just cheat a little I have it over here on my other monitor yes it's a lot of steps you can copy paste it uh, whatever you want it's just we take this xmlns which tells us how we define our xml we have the xml schema instance all this bunch tells us tells the server how we will agree or what schema we will agree to. Also this 3.0 is telling uh, 
Tomcat that we are working with Serverless 3.0 with has some advantages which I will go into in my next video. So, first of all, we need to define a servlet. It's pretty simple. Also, we need to give this servlet a name. I'll just say hello world. world. And we need to end it like we know from XML and also HTML. So, we also need to define which what the name of the class we want to run. So, we called it hello world. There we go. And now we end our servlet. Another thing we need to define is something called servlet mapping. What this does is that it tells the Tomcat server what the user will be uh, typing to enter this hello world class. So we give the URL pattern it's called my site slash hello world. So this is what I expect my user to type to enter my hello world class file. It's dash pattern. Yes. And we need to end this servlet mapping. So see this is what we expect them to type. And this goes up to here. It's links to this class file which is the same I defined in my Java file. Let's see my server mapping and my web app. There we go. Now we have our XML file which Tomcat will read and define my website from that. So I have my index file here, I have my web in folder here. Inside this I have my class files and my Java file. And I also have this web XML. So let's see if it works now. I doubt it, but let's try it. No, it cannot find the resource. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if I typed everything correct. Yes, seems like it. Also the URL parents, seems like it, yes. Okay. I'll just see if it works. Yes, the server is up and running. And it can find my index.html. Yes, alright. Okay. What I'll try. <laughs> the class files there. Interesting. Everything is named all large capital letters. Yes, yes. Yes, alright. Hmm. Yes. I'll just try restarting my server. Go to bin folder. Down. HP and start it up again. Alright, let's see if that did anything. Nope. Interesting. Let me see what about... No, it seems fine. Oh yeah, that's the problem. So you see, my folder is called my site. But what I wrote inside here is my site slash hello world. So I just need to read this and... Yes, it's not refreshed yet. Just refresh it, refresh it, refresh it. Um, so the problem was that um, the web.xml is an absolute, not an absolute path. So, yeah, the server wasn't refreshed, so it had to recompile some stuff. So now it works. It's a very simple idea about how to get your start site started and how to work with it. So we put our HTML files here. We have this web in folder containing our web XML and these class files, which is what we call the servlets. So I'll see you next time.